This is the day. I said, this is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We might as well rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody got problems. Everybody's going through some tests or trial. But my God, hallelujah. Put them aside right now. Amen. And open up your mouth and hands, stomp your feet, leap for joy, and give your God some praise. Hallelujah. Because when you think you're going through something bad, there's always somebody else. Way worse than what you're in. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. I got a hiding place. Oh, my God. I said, thank God. I got a hiding place in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just like he pulled me out when he pulled me out. Hallelujah. He's still, still pulling me out. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. There's nothing too hard. I said, there's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. You just need to hang on in there. Hold on and hang on. <laughs> oh, my God, my God. But whatever God allowing you to go in through, it's going to make you better. It's going to make you stronger. Hallelujah. It's going to give you a testimony so you can tell somebody, come in here, all you that fear God. And I will declare what he's done for my soul. Oh, my God. He's working on my soul tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. My God, hallelujah. He's showing his hand to be mighty. He's showing himself to be strong. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. The same God that saved me some 30 years ago. He's still saving me. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Save me from myself. Save me from, hallelujah, people and things, hallelujah. Oh, yes, keeping me, hallelujah, in this sinful and adulterous generation. Hallelujah, preachers are falling in the lust and in the idolatry and adultery and all kind of fornication, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, but God still got me standing. Still got me holding up, hallelujah, and lifting up the bloodstained banners. I'm so glad, hallelujah, attacked on every side, but yet not in despair, hallelujah. Oh, yes, God always make a way for us to escape, saints. Hallelujah, he always make a way for us to make it. Hallelujah, that's why I trust him. That's why I emphasize, my God, get in this thing. Get in it. Get way back in it. Get deep in it. Hallelujah. Let it consume you. Like the consuming fire there he is. Hallelujah. I thank God. Thank God for being who he is. Thank God for being so real in my life. My God. Hallelujah. Let it be real to you tonight. Oh, and your soul to catch on fire. You won't need her birthday card. You won't need an anniversary. You, you won't need a gift here and there when you let God set your soul on fire. You won't be so miserable as a saint. You won't be a burden as a people of God. But you will be, oh, hallelujah, some beacon of light that someone will look up to and say, I want to be like him. Oh, I want to be like her. My God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. I appreciate you tonight for being the great God that you are, Lord. I have no sad stories, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, because through it all, you've been good to me, Lord. Hallelujah, and everything that I did to mess it up, you even worked it out for my good. And I just give you praise, hallelujah, for being so real to me, Lord Jesus, in these last and this evil day, Lord God. Thank you, hallelujah, for our dear sister. Hallelujah, got baptized Sunday in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for that soul that, oh, God, surrendered unto you, Jesus. Bless her and encourage her. Our mother, sister, Nancy, her brother, her little sister. Bless them, Jesus. The, the family, look, God. Lay your hands upon them right now, God. Strengthen them right now, hallelujah. Oh, God, for the battle, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, that's before them. Oh, God, and we're praying tonight, hallelujah. You will lay your hands upon the sanctified everywhere. Remember the young lady who came, hallelujah, sister Norris, oh, God. Now you look, God, praying for her, Lord Jesus. Praying for her family, hallelujah. Oh, God, move by your power in her spirit right now, Lord. 
Touch Sister Pam right now, Lord. Touch her body, Lord God. With your stripes, she's healed, Lord God. Brother Denzel, praise to remember them, Lord God. Help them, God. Help your people all over. Hallelujah. Look and lay your hand upon Kelvin Bryant. Lord, you deliver him, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Look at, oh, God, bring someone in his life, oh, God, that will testify to his soul. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And he will hear a truth, oh, God, that will transform his very life. Remember, Sister Maddie, look, I continue to bless her. She and Sister Lorraine, oh, God, we're praying for her. Look, I bless her to hold on, God. Give us strength right now as we pray, oh, God. Remember the Naz William, I'm praying for him, his family, Lord God. Praying for the Mickens family, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, Pastor Anna Rose Keys and Bishop and Mother Camera. Praying for them right now, Lord Jesus. Praying, oh, God, for Pastor Philip Lewis, his wife, his family, and all the saints in Covington, Georgia. So many people, Lord God, we've been praying with and praying for, Lord God. Remember Theodore's, oh, God, how young, junior, Lord God. Praying for Lord God. Raise him up, God. Touch his body as I speak. His wife, encourage her right now, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, you're able, Lord Jesus. You're able, Lord God. I'm praying, hallelujah. Oh, God, for Mr. Hallelujah Terry tonight, Lord Jesus. Bless him as they travel, Lord God, the dangerous highway, going to the funeral, Lord God. Remember Eddie Eagle, Lord God, the family, Lord God, and the loss of their loved ones, oh God, in the fire. Hallelujah, three souls, oh God, burn in the fire, Lord God. Comfort them, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, comfort them. Oh, hallelujah. In the way that you know how to comfort them, Jesus. Oh, God, I bless you right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God, for being the great God that you are, Lord Jesus. Remember, hallelujah, Brother Brad, killing his worth tonight. Look at his wife, Darlene. Continue to heal, Lord God. Deliver his soul, Lord Jesus. Praying, oh God, for all the people of God everywhere, the young saints. Oh, God, Brother Jose, Sister Monica, Lord God, praying for them, Lord God. The family right now, Jesus, heal, deliver, make whole, make free, Lord Jesus. Brother Clarence, Sister Misty. Oh, God, Brother Blake, Lord God, praying for them, Lord God. Have your way in the lives, Jesus, brother. Bo, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Chapel, look, God. Remember him, Lord God. Help him right now, Jesus. You're able, look, God, to help your people, Lord. I'm praying, oh, God, for Sister Barbara. Please, oh, God, bless her, Jesus. Oh, God, give her strength right now, Lord. I just thank you for being the great God that you are, Lord. Touch, oh, God, hallelujah. Brother Spike, touch his wife, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, with your strength, she's healed, oh, God. I thank you right now, hallelujah. You're worthy of our praise. Look at the coach family. Remember them, Lord. Your brother Bill, Sister Charlie, the Grace and Logan and Michael. Praying for them right now. The Corn family. Praying for them, Jesus. Oh God, bless your people. Hallelujah. Oh God, Pastor Gaddy. Lord God, praying for him. Lord God, there. And oh, hallelujah. Laura, Mississippi. Lord God. Praying for him, Lord Jesus, his wife, his family. Oh God, remember. Oh God, hallelujah. Lord God. Oh God, Mother Funches. Oh God. He to bless her, encourage her, Lord. Her sons, oh God. Carlos, Jonathan, and Justin. Their wives, their families, oh God. Bless them to come back to you for his everlasting too late, Jesus. I thank you, look, I'm in my son. Oh God, bless him, my wife. God bless her, Jesus. Help us all, God. In this church, Lord Jesus. Oh God, I'm praying for this church, oh God. That oh God, they make up in their mind, Lord, who they want to serve, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh God, I thank you tonight. I'm here in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you, hallelujah, for just being the faithful God that you are to me. Again, I have no excuses. I thank you, Lord God. All excuses were nailed to the cross. Oh, hallelujah. You went there for me, Lord God, so I can be here for you. You went there for me so I can be here for you. Oh, I thank you for that. Have your way in this place, oh God. To the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord. I say, great is the Lord. For he is greatly to be praised. And he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. I said, what a mighty God that we serve, saints. We serve a mighty God. Amen. I don't know. I don't think it, he's that important to some people. I don't think he's that real to them, Jesus. My God. I'm praying that we all be ready. Amen. This don't look like ready to me. I said, this don't look like ready to me. Amen. God doesn't carry a double standard. What he say to one, he says it to his own. Amen. Be a sad thing 
to be lost in a church like this be a sad thing to go to hell with all this truth being taught unto you. Amen. We are privileged that God drew us here. Amen. But it, he drew us here, but we got to want to stay here. We got to want to be here. Amen. Anytime you want to be, you be. Amen. Anything you want to do, you do. Amen. I thank God for those that are here tonight. Amen. You could have laid at home. You could have said it was raining. Amen. You could have said you was tired. Amen. See, that's what God looking for. He's looking for people who looking for him. You're not going to be saved by accident. You're not just going to fumble around and make it into heaven. Amen. I press for sin. I agonize. Hallelujah. I stress myself for the high calling. Oh, my God. This is a high calling. This is a high calling. This ain't like getting a new job. It's not, not getting a promotion. This is a high call. Amen. Oh, yes. So I must do whatever it takes to make sure I reach that mark, that prize of that mark of that high calling. Hallelujah. Amen. It's amazing to me. And I say it so often. I really get tired of saying it. And we're going to go to work five days a week. And we're going to give them all the time they ask for. And we're going to want a paycheck when it's over. Because rightfully we deserve one. But when it comes to Jesus, I said when it comes to Jesus, amen, headache, hair ache, everything ache, children this, children that, cars, donkeys, horses, Buggies, amen, anything. Man, do you not know, just like the days are hewn out, I hew my schedule out for the Lord Jesus. Amen, this is a must for me. For 30 some years, I have made this priority. If I don't do anything else, and believe me, I get tired too. Believe me, I get wearisome too. I get discouraged. Well, hallelujah. When I make up in my mind and get here, hallelujah, God begin to give me strength. God, God begin to, hallelujah, give me joy. Hallelujah. Ooh, unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. It ain't nothing like being in the presence of the one who loves you and you love him. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God. Thank God. I'm married to him. Amen. Married to my Savior. So I'm preparing myself to meet him that when he makes that cry. When the bridegroom makes that cry, I got to be ready. Thank God for the blood tonight. Thank God for another Tuesday night Bible class. Amen. I appreciate God. I do. This ain't no gain to me. It never has been. Folk gonna mess around and miss the greatest event that's been on the calendar of their lives for years. Amen. I'm telling you, saints, God is merciful. But at that time, there won't be no mercy. Won't be an amen, an elder thrift. I don't plan on being here with you. Amen. I'm with you now. Amen. Striving with you now. But there's something you got to do for yourself. Same thing I got to do, you got to do too. Amen. God has no respect to person. But we were experiencing our last study, amen, in this great prophecy of Ezekiel. Now, journey through the Bible. 
we've seen God sending him a message, a warning to the false prophet. And, and the false prophet consists of the men and the women. There were women false prophets also. Amen. And, and these were the ones who got the people, amen, away from the word of God. You got to understand, saints of God, you cannot have church without the study of the word of God. Amen. These people had got them, just like today, got them so caught up in emotions and, and feelings. Amen. They gave them prayer cloths and handkerchiefs and all these kind of gimmicks and stuff instead of just teaching the word of God. Let's understand, saints of God, hallelujah. Amen. These, amen, are, 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 are they, my God, hallelujah, who have a, another agenda. Their agenda is not God. Amen. Got to understand, saints, hallelujah. Amen. These people here, amen, hallelujah, know little or, or, or not much at all, even on today, about the word of God. I was, I, I mean, it just blows my mind how people come into church and been in church all their life, but they know very little. Boy, y'all quiet on me. Very little about the word of God. They emphasize more about the gift than the giver of the gift. Amen. Then you get all these diviners and these soothsayers, amen, who try to tell people, amen, what they see in all these services. And they leave sin of themselves and the people around it unchecked. And anytime you don't deal with sin, sin going to deal with you. That's why these preachers are falling. That, that's why people despise a church like this. Because one thing we deal with, we don't deal with nothing else. We got to deal with sin. We got to deal with because it's in all of us. All of us have the disease called sin. And every day we must be delivered from it. Hallelujah. The word, my God. Hallelujah. David said, have I hid in my heart? My God, why did I hide in my heart that I might not sin against God? Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, God, when you don't let the word of God, amen, deal with sin, you're going to create failures in your church. We've come a time now in church where people just accept failure. Amen. When people fall now in the sin, they have no remorse, no repentance, no shame, no nothing because everybody else is doing it. Amen. And this is frustrating to the grace of God. God died for this. Amen. He died. He gave his life. Amen. That we might be saved. But we are frustrating the grace of God with no kind of repentance. But in the end, God says that he was going to get these false prophets. Amen. But yet he would still save the remnant. And I thank God today. Amen. For the truth, saints. I, I don't know about you. This is all I know. All I know is this truth. Thank God my mother said something on the other day amen. She said they're still talking about amen that uh, at the church, the, the message and, and he was saying, uh, the pastor was saying he from the old school. She said no, nah, ain't nothing old about the word of God. And, and to hear that come out of her mouth she didn't heard me preach for years amen. And that's the truth. I ain't never heard one. There ain't nothing old about the word of God. The, the thing is, folks just don't know it. So with that being said, let's enter into chapter 14 of his unveiling prophecy. Amen. Called Ezekiel. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Read with me. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Now you got to understand, these elders that, that came, and they came before the prophet because they knew he was a man of God, but God exposed them before he even sat down. You got to understand, saying God knows those that are here. You can come to church all you want to. You, you can play the game all you want to. You can, but God knows where your heart truly is. Amen. He can see right through these men as they sat down. And he said, these men, Ezekiel, have idols in their heart. In other words, they were church pretenders. Amen. They didn't have God in their heart. They had idols. They had worldly aspects. 
I'm telling you, since going, there is no different from those people back then than there are saints today. What's getting in folks' way of serving God? Idols. Hunt things. Can I get a witness? You can't even praise God up in here sometimes because you got your mind somewhere else on some things. They're going to sit down before the prophet and act like they know about God in the church and go to an Ezekiel. These are just pretenders. They're all about themselves. And I'm telling you, when I begin to study this, I harp on this, and I've been harping on this for years, and exposing the spirit of self. Amen. And, and as we see the last days approaching, you, you ought to be able to see this speech, this, this spirit dominating, amen, even your own life sometimes. Amen. Not God, it's you, self. Amen. And this is the spirit of the age. The last day church will be Laodicea. Amen. People rule. Amen. An arrogant church. A church that's all about prosperity, all about what they got, what they have, wanting more and more of this world and less and less of God. We say, if you wanted God, you'd be here tonight. You really want it, a touch from God. You'll be sitting out there or standing up out there in this arch tonight to your soul long for God. And you ain't got to like me. Because I'm going to tell the truth if you cut me with a knife. Because what God requires out of us is your heart. You see these men come and sit down in the presence of this prophet. Amen. And before they even got down, amen, on the ground, God said, Ezekiel, they ain't number pretenders. And I'm telling you, says God, it's hard to have church with pretenders. God says it's hard to have church be your, because once a pretender get exposed, they turn on you. Ever has anybody turn on you when you find them out? They'll get with other pretenders and talk against you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. And then listen to what God said to Ezekiel in his ear. He said, they're coming to you, but why should I listen to what they say? God said the hope of the hypocrite through Bildad shall perish. God don't want nobody acting. He can't use the actor. And we wonder why our churches are in such bad shape today. All these pretenders. Amen. People who have come here. Amen. And I, I'm thinking they're sincere. Because I know if you come down to this church here, that God had to draw you here. Everybody ain't running out the truth. They talk about they want some truth. Till they hear the truth. Amen. They start hearing the truth. And they start exposing them. Y'all don't see them get up out of here. Amen. And then they go get more anointed after they leave. <laughs> that's a joke to me. That's a joke because that's any place that you're going to grow in, you're going to grow amongst the truth. You can't outgrow the truth. Huh? You can't get more anointed than what this Bible tells you. Boy, I tell you the truth. And it's just sad that some of you don't know that. And you just accept it because it is what it is. But God knows the pretenders. <laughs> Look what he says there, verse 4 and 5. He says, therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idol in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of idols that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. God, he's speaking something here that a lot of folk need to hear. God said, you might be here physically, but let them know I know where your heart is. You're so far away from me. It, it don't even, it's just, he's called it estranged. <laughs> you, it, and when you're estranged as people, amen, it, it, it's sort of like 
who are you? What are you? What, you know, you're more like a visitor. Amen. Because you're not connected to God. And, and these were religious men. And, and God calls them by the prophet to tell them because of hypocrisy. He said he would judge them. And he said, and I'm telling you, says God, I, I've always talked about in this church the danger of being in a church like this. Amen. It's best for you not to be here playing. Amen. Because once you hear this truth, you are held accountable. I don't care where you go. Everybody that is, man, we've had so hundreds of people who come through this church and they think they're all right. They think they have escaped. But once you hear this truth, whatever day you heard it, believe me, God going to bring it out. Look here. That's why he got the book of remembrance for. Because you're going to forget. See, you're going to drift on out in the world. You're going to forget what you did. God said, now nah, look here. I don't remember that. He said, I do. God does. So you got to watch, man. You know, I mean, and then some of these people left, didn't give no explanation. Then some of them, you know, fraudulently said, you know, well, you know, you don't. Well, you knew that from the beginning. Huh? If COVID got you out of this church because we didn't wear masks and we didn't take the shot, where is your apostolic Holiness faith then. You say you're so anointed and, and all these tongues and baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and living on a plane higher than heaven and here you are got a mask on your face. Who in the world gonna let you pray for them? Who? I don't care what your title is, where you come from, who? I need somebody who got some faith, who believe God through the impossible, through the thing that's seen it and be impenetrable. I believe God said, my God, that's so high. Help this I, I believe God can take us. Give me this mountain here. I, I, I'm stronger now than I was 45 years ago. You know why? Because if God be for us, man, we forget God be for us. You're the doubter. God can't work through doubt. He can't work through fear. All these years of my walking and serving God, and they talking about COVID. And here you are sewing mask cloths and put them on your face. Same way these women were doing, uh, <laughs> giving folk these handkerchiefs and stuff. God said he sent his word and it healed them. I don't know about y'all saying, don't not heal me like the, woo, like the, like the word of God. That's why I love it. It's medicine. I say it's therapy. Hallelujah. It's the thing that brings joy in the midst of sorrow and hope. Hope for my tomorrow. God said, I'm going to judge these hypocrites. Tell them, Ezekiel. You know, I can imagine these folks, amen, they had a killer instinct too. When Ezekiel started telling them what God say, how, you know what they did to Jeremiah? Preacher slapped Jeremiah. Folk don't want the truth, man. I mean, really, I mean, you have been in this church for years. You have seen people come in this church for years. Where are they now? I mean, you cannot go above or rise above truth. Self do that. Self want to be seen. Self want to be recognized as though it's just, you know, some great thing. Man, look here. You got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. and said, in due season, he'll exalt you. I, I don't look for this exaltation. I thought about that today, man. Just call me brother. 
I, I don't need a title. I, I don't want to be, you know, bishop and all that kind of stuff. Hey, Amen. It's just more self-involved. Just call me brother. Call me Rodney if you have to. Thrift if you have to. I know who I am. I know who I belong to. I know how God has blessed me. I know what I'm doing on the battlefield. I don't need nobody to encourage me. I learn to encourage my own self in the Lord. Looking for no phone call from nobody. I ain't never look for none, man. 30 some years. I know. But look at he's ever present, always with all like that. He's a man, he's just a prayer away. Oh, now I ain't rubbing your little paws to do no man. See me, man. You just self-engulfed. Emotionally frenzied. Just caught up in yourself. Come on, you serve God. Y'all be ashamed of yourself. Uh, Elijah was tired when he ran from Jezebel. He was woe out. And sometimes you just can't think when you're out. And she was going to kill him. But guess what? God said, arise and eat. Because I still got enough, some journey left. See, you, still, you, 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 can't, you, you can't die out right now. You can't give out right now. You can't give up right now. Because, amen, God still got a long journey in your life left. Some of y'all ain't done much anyway, so God, <laughs> he's giving you an opportunity to make up some time. Verse 6 through 8 said, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent. This is all God is asking. This is the hardest thing to get church folks to do. I said it's the hardest thing to get church folks to do. Folks been in church a long time. Truth hit them. God called for one thing and they won't give it to him. Repent. And turn yourself from your idols. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. Amen. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourns in Israel would separate himself from me and set it up his idol in his heart and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of the people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now, God, he exposes and then after he exposes, he sends mercy. Now, why is he getting mercy? Well, he's he letting you chew on it for a while. You've heard the word. It's prick your heart. You know he's talking to you. But God, I mean, he don't really have to. He could judge you right then. Because you're guilty at charge. But what he does, he still, he said, God is so, um, he's so wonderful. He's so loving, man. They're not words you can really describe because we ain't got none of that in us. Who oh, can do us all bad and wrong and eat us up? My God, I'm telling you, we want vengeance. We want to see something done to them. God pauses. Pauses. You ought to thank God. Some of us wouldn't be here tonight. Most of us, most of us wouldn't be here tonight. God had to pause. Some will give you a space to, to turn, to repent. I showed you yourself now. I showed you who you are. I showed you what's in your heart. We always looking for other folks to repent, but what do we do? We want other folks to change, but what do we do? Well, we harbor in our hearts the same idols they got. God said, if they come to you, Ezekiel, look here, ain't no tell them ain't no prayer you can pray. A ain't no none oil you can pour on them that, that take them out of my wrath. Because see, once God gives you truth, amen, there's nothing else he can give you. Huh? 
And in this church here, there's one thing I know. We, 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 you know, we have people traveling from a long distance. That, you, you all are not here if for no choir. We don't have one. You're not coming here for no music. We, we don't have any. Huh? You, you see these people on, on this social media. You know, they got 44,000 people. Yeah, they dancing. People want to check out their attraction. Oh, they got music. Oh, the anointing is going on. But but do they stay there when folks start calling sin, sin? Oh, too many people watch it when they start dealing with sin. Huh? When you start pointing out what Joe and them doing. Huh? When, when you start pointing out these sissies and, and bulldoggers, you hear what I'm saying? Start dealing with the things that affect this world. The church is supposed to be the light of the world, but we act like, my God, we're ashamed to shed the light on the world. We want to be popular. We want to be light. Man, when you preach this gospel, your mama might want a key. Your daddy might want you out. Huh? This thing here will separate folks from you. You ain't got to leave them. Leave them. They'll leave you alone. Man, I be walking around Montevallo with people and talking to them with a smile on my face, and I know they don't like me. And there ain't but one reason why they don't like me, because I hadn't fallen like them. I ain't fornicating like them. I ain't playing church like them. Huh? Folks want equal. And they can't get equal when Nehemiah's still on the wall. Huh? Hey, Amen. See, Nehemiah can always come down to where they are. It's going to be hard for them to climb up that mountain to come up where he is. So they rather bring Nehemiah down at, amen, at any cost, any kind of way if they got to lie and say he used to be gay. <laughs> I told the brother that today, he said, what? <laughs> you? Rotten and thrift? I said, yeah, that's the lie. Then I talked to a young man that hadn't seen him since he was little and was talking to him, uh, ran into him on, on the side of the road on a four-wheeler. He said, uh, man, somebody must hate you real bad. Ain't him saved. He said, it, it must have been a woman. This is a young kid. I might as well be his daddy. I said, why you say that? He said, because you, you must have didn't give her no play. <laughs> but y'all ain't hit me up in here. So she's going to put on this man here must be. I'm telling you, that's blasphemy. <laughs> that's an abomination to say that again. Yes, me. My God. Man, that's, that's, I hate that more than I hate anything. That's a spirit that I really, I, I really have to catch myself because I get nervous. And I start sweating. And I don't want to go back to that person no more. Young man said that today, too, and uh, uh, he knew me. He said, man, he told the guy, I'd never seen him. He said, man, that, that fella there, he a preacher right now. But I just said, you know, brother, I still got some of that in me, but I'm, I, I don't want to touch that no more because that's going to destroy who I am now. I can't let that come back in, in any kind of way. Because that's going to destroy, destroy where I am now. And I'll give them exactly what they want. That's what, they, that's what the gang said. That's what they waiting on. They, they want that. You can do it and, 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 and it might be restored. Me? No, I, I can't do it. I lose respect of everybody who's heard me preach. And then, then the ones who ain't never became our church going to come and say, Hey, I told y'all. <laughs> 30 some years of living this. I told y'all. Folks, just, I'm serious, man. You wouldn't believe how people hate this church, this ministry. But God said, I'm going to get them. Don't worry about it. Amen. And He said, I'm going to do it to let them know that I am the Lord. And I'm telling you, that's why I thank God. Amen. That, that when God calls for us to repent, we better repent. God never brings conviction on us except he wants us to repent. 
You don't want to question God because God is always right. Always right. You need to sing these old Baptist hymns. If you find anything that shouldn't be, you don't want God looking. You want El Cliff to preach and the word going to find. And when it fire, he ain't going to take it away either. You got to get rid of it. You got to turn from it. You got to give it up. God ain't going to take nothing from you that you don't want him to take from you. You'll stay right there and die and go to hell through this church. Look what he says here. Hallelujah. Verse 9 through 11. He says, and if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him, and I will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. It's a dangerous thing. Call yourself a preacher. Some of this stuff we've seen preachers do, my God. My thing, somebody said something the other day to me, Pastor Lewis. I said, Pastor, they lost fear. He said something. I said, no, that ain't it. I said, people have lost fear. They don't fear God. There's no way that I could even think like that. Knowing God hearing, knowing God listening to me, guard your heart with all diligence. Huh? Put a watchman over the doors of my mouth. Now you have to pray that God bring every spirit subject in your life that's not like him. You let any of them roam in your life, they will take over before you know it. Man, you got to be real with this thing because God said, I'll destroy you in the midst of the people. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Now, here you are knowing the man ain't living none, but still going to the church. Knowing he just cheated on his wife and you're still going to the church. Knowing that she's a self-made or he's a self-made pastor and you're still going to the church. Huh? That shows how little we think about God. How much we think about self. Hey, Amen. Look here. I tell y'all that here all the time now. When I get off this word here, y'all get to skipping. You better. Pat, pat, say a prayer for your thrift and keep on going. I understand that some people have no place to, to go. I talk to people in other states, they wish they were here. Because where they are, they have no place to go. That's a sad thing to hear from people, good folks. And the folks who really want to be saved. Huh? Got some brothers right now sitting at home with their wives and children. I'd rather be here than be in the house with them jokers. People who are playing games with my soul. That's why y'all don't know how good you got it. I said, y'all understand how blessed you have it. And look how few that come here like it's going to last forever. They thought they were going to last forever. There are churches that I'm seeing that I preached at years that are so messed up today. Because once the head get messed up, the people are going to follow. But the real folks, the ones who real say that no holy, they ain't going to follow that. They'd rather stay at home. They got brother Nash with you. Huh? And that's some more I, I could name, but I'm not going to name that name. I can talk about him because he comes here. There's a whole lot of folks I know that go to other church. They are looking, trying to find a way to get out of where they are. Saints, I'm telling you. I'm not just telling you to tell you. I, I'm telling you because this is the vital hour of just the time that God could come back. And look at how many folks pre- act like, pretend that they're ready. And they're not ready. Huh? Look at look here, saints. The main mission of the prophet was to bring God unto the people. Speak his word, not push his own agenda. 
Amen. But speak the word of God. Now, what's happening today, well, God's talking about these false prophets. They were not pushing God's agenda. They're pushing their own. Why? Because there was something they were trying to gain. On well, St. John 10 and 11 through 13, God, God said, I, I'm the shepherd. And then he talked about the hireling. He see the wolf and run. Because th th those sheep are not his. He's not working because he loved their souls. He's working because he's trying to get the pocketbooks. Huh? Why you think they teach all this soup and salad and this candy message and make every sinner feel good? Amen. All the saints with the sinners are all in that same melting pot, that, 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 that a gourmet salad. Because that's how you build buildings and how you make people rich. Faith, 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 faith. Faith don't offend nobody. Huh? Criminals get faith. But when you teach this word, it's going to get into your soul. It's going to get not into your faith, but in your facts. So you, need, you need something in your facts. Huh? Amen. Amen. Because when you do that, you can check yourself. You can check yourself and see yourself like God sees you. Not like folks see you, but like God. I want to be seen in the eyes of God. Show me me. Got time to be messing with anybody else. Before I get up out of here, I got to get me together. So show me me. When you got a heart for God, he going to show you you. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, have mercy. Hey, and, and, and then if you got to cry, if it's so bad, cry. Don't worry about nobody looking at you. There's something you got to cry out for. Don't ever feel sorry for yourself when well, you done planted all them seeds all your life. Now you want to reap and then cry. And complain and feel sorry for yourself. Do you know how awful you've been all those years? How many lives have you destroyed? And God could recompense that same judgment on you and destroy you just like that. And with all that you're going through and suffering, you still ain't got what you deserve. Huh? Where were you? That's what he asked Job. Where were you? Huh? You want to be all that? Where were you when I flung the heavens into the firmament? Huh? Job said, I put my hand over my mouth. See, see, some folk just need to shut up and take it like a man. Take it like a woman. Hey, man. Because guess what, man? As long as you stay saved, Amen. It'll be over with after a while. <laughs> Amen. Don't rush it now. No, it'll be over after a while. You mess around here and rush it. My God, you might die wrong. Uh, amen. Sometimes we be wishing for other folk to leave here. They, they, they still be standing when you're in the ground. <laughs> I'll live you. <laughs> they be praying, God, help me to live with it. Uh, uh, Paul said, I, I saw him thrice. <laughs> but God said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for you. Huh? Thank God for grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says in verse 12 through 14, he says, the word of the Lord came again to me saying, son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof. Now, all this is happening because of these false prophets. Not keeping the sin of the people in check. This let me know that when you teach truth or you read truth, you go somewhere else and you hear somebody else, y'all know right then and there where they stand. 
when they make that declaration or whatever the subject they pick or however they teach it, y'all know right then and that he or she ain't what they're about. Uh, and most of the time you lead them churches like, my God, I pity these people. I pity these folks, man. Amen. Because guess what? If they do not hear this, they will all be lost. That's why y'all say, thank God I heard it. Thank God I heard it. And, and I didn't run from it. I, I ran to it. I said, thank God I heard it. And I didn't run from it. I ran to it. I want more. Amen. Hallelujah. He said they trespass against me. Grievous. It grieves God hard when you know the truth and won't do it. It grieves God hard when you know the truth and won't preach it. It grieves God hard when you know the truth and won't tell people. Man, you ought to know today God's heart is being grieved. Amen. But God said, I'm going to stretch my hand out and I will send famine upon it and I will cut off man and beast from it. He said, though these three men, hallelujah, Noah and Daniel and Job were in it, they should deliver, amen, but their own souls by their righteousness, says the Lord God. God said, if Noah preached, amen, he won't say nobody but his own self. It was so bad. Just like it is today. Nobody wants to hear the truth. Huh? If Jesus were to come here and preach right now tonight, a whole lot of folk would still miss it. He said if, if Noah, Daniel, amen, Job, these righteous men, if they would stand before you and preach, you wouldn't listen. Huh? See, once certain things get in your heart, when your mind is already made up, you can't change, folks. Most people, you know, I, I, I mean, don't nothing really surprise me. It's just a matter of time that you're going to show yourself. Because, you know, the, the longer truth coming, man, truth going, it's going to catch you if you're pretending. Huh? You, you, might, you might get by with it for a year or so. But when you're wrestling with something in your heart, some self in your heart, truth going to bring it out sooner or later. Come bring it out. <laughs> and everybody looking at you like, oh, they solid. They, they, oh, they, they solid. Look at them, man. Oh, oh they, they love the Lord. Then you see them drift on, right on. So a lot of y'all don't seen them leave. And, and you know what? What comes to your mind is, why? I'm hearing the same exact thing. And it's turning me on. It's got me on fire. It got me want to be saved now that I've ever been saved before. But see, when you do not want the message, that, that means there's something in you that you're hiding. You can't reveal it here because it's too many, amen, too many more than you. You, you know, if the church is big enough, you can get with somebody like you. But this church ain't that big. <laughs> ain't too many folks you can get to whisper to. Hey, that's how people do. Folks have always been whisperers. When they don't like something, call them. They might start out on the phone. Yeah, praise the Lord, how you doing? Yeah, man, we had a good time. Yeah, but you, you know that. Yeah, but, but Oh, that's when they get right there. Oh, yeah. And then they just feed your idolatrous heart. You just suck it up. Huh? Back in our day, man, they'd have cut you all right. This, uh, leave that alone. Take your garbage to the landfill. Don't dump it on me. I, I, I'm being helped. I'm being blessed. I know what I'm getting. I got ears. I'm hearing it my own self. And like I said when I first got saved, until he get, as long as he's still on the word, I'll be here. But the minute he get off, skedaddle. Huh? Folks too full of themselves, but guess what? God full of God too. <laughs> he said, look here, man. I can send Noah, I can send Daniel, and I can send Job to y'all you will receive them. So why would I save a people that won't hear the truth? 
And these folks think they go into other churches and think they're getting by. You don't get by. This same word follow you. Wherever you go. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, God. And I'm telling you, I thank God. These men lived holy in very unholy times. And, and what a challenge for us today, saints. That, that's a, it's a challenge for us to, to be on our jobs, to be in these streets, to be around these ungodly folks and still striving to live holy. How you do that, Elthro? Turn over to Psalms 119. Amen. How you do that, Elthro? That's a way to do it. You know, and I appreciate God that that that. God always make a way for us to escape that we may be able to bear it, he says. <laughs> Something get heavy. Now, you don't say that you don't get heavy. Your knees might buckle, but thank God you're still holding. Hey, we still got it up in there. Hey, Amen. Look what he says in Psalm 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He asks the question, how can I with all these demons and devils it ain't nothing like a, a, a church demon talking Jesus one minute and then talking about you behind your back the next. Putting you down. Amen. Whispering in the ears of other folks and you wonder why they're looking at you funny. Because something been said. But see, you got to stay clean though. Spiritually, you got to always keep yourself clean. How do you do that, saint? By taking ease. <laughs> They're unto according to thy word. This word here do something for me. It, it just, you know, I, if you want to do wrong, it'll talk to you and say, no, you know, you can't do that. If you, if, if you want to, you know, go somewhere where, where it said, no, you know, you, you can't go there. If you want to look at it, you said, no, you, you, you can't look at it. You got too much of this word in you. But that's some saints, my God, that'll delete. <laughs> Bypass it. <laughs> and, and, and then turn it back on after they do and, and, and see and get, you, you know. And, and you got to understand, don't you know Satan watching it? Jesus already know it. But what but, 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 but get with God, though, is when Satan brings it up to God, look at them saved folks. He's an accuser of the brethren. Believe me, now don't think he ain't coming before God and don't bring you up. No, you know, God, uh, uh, well, well, let me get the thrift. Take the hedge off around him. He just serve you for what you're getting him for anyway. And guess what? The hedge been tucked down a lot of time. <laughs> and and, and uh, I'm still standing. And the reason why I'm standing is no goodness of my own. It's just that my life means nothing to me. It really doesn't. You, you, you have to understand when he said this word, it's so simple. I've taught it a hundred million times in this church and everywhere I've gone, I've taught it. Matthew, Mark, Mark 8, 34, you know, uh, what profit a man gain over and lose his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? That's what I think about. What, what, what do I have to give for what God gave me? See, we always want to go above and, and live in our Sabbath. You didn't save yourself. God had to first give you a mind to even be. Why you want to think so high? Well, you have nothing to give to God. Then we tripping when we get over here. We falling when we get over here. We lust and we eyes. Were, we, we just sinning while we over here. Huh? But I look at this. If I lose my life for his sake and the gospel, I'm gonna gain it. But if I if I hold on to it, like a lot of folks tonight, a lot of folks in these churches everywhere, you ain't got you don't, you don't gotta do all that. Look he 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 didn't say that just to be saying it. If, if you hold on to it, he said, you're going to forfeit yours. I, I don't, what you go to hell for, brother, my house? What you go to hell for, sister, my, uh, uh, um, my car, my children? Man, 
There is nothing in this world worth hell. Nothing. You can love some people all you want to, man. They ain't worth me going to hell. I ain't never loved nobody like I love Jesus. I thought about that the other day, too. For, for some reason, a young lady, like I said, I was dating. When I got saved and came over here, that's what she asked me. How can you love Rodney and stop love? I said, I, I didn't know how to answer that question. I, I remember saying, I love God more than I love you. And 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 that ain't a that ain't nothing any man say. In words, people don't talk like that. Safe folk don't even think like that. Safe folk want what they want. Name it and claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> man, I thought this thing through because I I want to be saved. What does it make any kind of sense to get all this stuff and wind up in hell? Messing with this stuff. Messing with people who want this stuff. Man, you can frustrate yourself straight to hell messing with people. Now they live on and go on about their business. You mean well and I got caught up. Man, you can't let that happen. What can I give in exchange for my soul? I, 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 God knows I ain't got nothing. So my life belongs to him. Amen. Even, even in my bad decisions, the wrong choices, my life still, I cannot take out on God what I did to myself. He deserves everything, every fiber in our life. He paid for it. We just act like, you know, we got over here because our education, I was so good. Man, no, you were not. You deserve hell just like everybody else. Amen. But God, who is rich in mercy, I say rich and rich and you know that's a he got to be shown the rich to have that much mercy. A rich in mercy, not only to say you, but to say you and me and us and millions and hundreds of people who are saved. And every now and then we can still get a jacked up attitude. Amen. Every now and then, twice a week, sometimes. I don't want us quickening like we some saved folk. Man, they, they agree. we are saved by grace through faith. There ain't nothing good in us. Amen. And go on. Let the prophet know, man. Don't don't worry about them. I, I I I I I got these people. But knowing and applying this word unto your life will keep you clean. I thought about that because you got to understand that every day you got to make a conscious decision. Every day you have to make a conscious decision who you're going to serve. Are you going to do according to God's word or are you going to do according to what you want to do? And I'm telling you, in this hour here, church folk do what they want to do. <laughs> they, they can call it Jesus all they want to, but that ain't God. Amen. You know, yeah, yeah. Don't judge me. I ain't judging you. I'm just telling you that ain't God. See, see, you are a threat to Satan's kingdom when you know God through his word. A lot of people are destroyed for the lack of see, see, when you are ignorant of something, you got to go along with it. But when you know, mm -mm, you can't go along because I know what God says. Amen. Have you ever been, uh, uh, walk up on a conversation and all these people talking, you hear something that's error, you say, no, nah, nah, that ain't what the word of God say. What? Hey, your demons then, boy. They, like the meerkats, them. Huh? Like, who are you? Yeah, he come Miss Sanctified, Mr. Sanctified. No, nah, nah, why you gotta go all there? See, see, people can dish it, but they can't take it. Huh? Oh, they can do. I let them talk though, and, and I get all them facts. That's why you got to keep a sharp memory. You can't just walk away from a lot of things, especially when they start uh, teaching folks. Because folks are follow error. I was approached by a guy the other day when I approached him because I was, you know, I was just trying to witness, give him a CD. He, he, you know, he's he he was man. He, he had education. He had been in in, in, in government high. He, matter of fact, CIA. 
retired, very knowledgeable guy, talked about the eclipse of how the sun rising. I mean, this guy was putting out some knowledge. But I gave that CD. He, he, when I walked, he said, "You want to know? You want to? You want to? You want to? You want to? How much knowledge do you want to know? I want to ask you a question. How much knowledge?" I said, "Brother, this Bible is enough." He looked at me funny. I said, right, "Look, you know the forty-four steps. So that's brother. I don't need no forty-four steps." I said, "This Bible here. If you can get to know this book, you know more than any man could ever." Want to know in life? Oh, they folk man way so far away from God because they want to exalt themselves. What knowledge do puff you up? I walked away from my brother here, you know. This book here, I'm gonna stick with this book here. I said, furthermore, it's working for me. I didn't leave him with that because he's drinking something. And I want I want to say, whatever you wear 44 steps, you miss one. Cause, cause they ain't working for you. Huh? You missed a few of them steps. So we want to act like there's some big. Oh man, this book here. If, if the church knew the book, I said, if church folks, huh? With a, you know. In them some bean class and them, them new, you know, them little adult class that you said you was in, come raise up in church. You done knew some of this. You would have done all the stuff you did. You had something that keeps you in check. But since it wasn't that serious, time you got away from the eyes of the people. <laughs> hey, Amen. And when darkness came, you did exactly what darkness wants you to do. Y'all didn't hear me up in here. <laughs> Amen. Look what he says here. He says, verse 15, if I call north some beast to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through it because of the beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, said the Lord, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. God is into righteousness. And this is what he's talking about here. He goes back to these three men, these righteous men. He said, look here, when things get this bad, and I'm telling you, they're this bad right now, saints. When people start denying truth, when people start walking away from truth, I don't care what you tell them. Notice how people today... If you in relationships, I, I talk to a lot of people in relationship, good people, and, and what people do who, who they're dealing with is they'll turn the situation around and make it look like it's their fault. Well, I'm trying to do what's right. I'm going to church. With me. Now, how is it my fault? Well, you you know, people have learned that narcissism. They they learn how to manipulate. You. If you don't know where you are in God, folks will easily manipulate you. I don't give them two seconds. You know, you might call it arrogance or whatever, but I know who I am. I don't need you. Oh, if you don't want to be my friend, skitty beep 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 beep. So what? I play with my my my, my own mind. I got God, man. God is something so awesome in me. I can be by myself and never miss a beat, man. I ain't all that lonely. I've never been that kind of person. I just love what God, I look at nature. I look at the, I go to the water and just stay there. And, you know, people say, he's strange. No, no, I got peace. When folks ain't got peace, they have misery. And miserable folk will make your life huh? miserable. Got a tick on you in the middle of your back and you can't get it off. <laughs> a misery tick. <laughs> Just sucking the life out of you. <laughs> you can't burn it off, scratch it off. It ain't, ain't going nowhere. Done dug in deep. But God said that righteous man he going to stand, but I'm going to destroy everything that's around him. That's why you, 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 some people you have to let go. 
to there are some people you have to let go or they'll drown you. Uh, the, the old lifeguard uh, 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 teaching you how to save people. They say, don't jump right out there when he's drowning. Let him go on at least three times and, and, and tire him out and then go behind him. Don't ever try to save him while he's looking at you. Be, let it be a surprise. Because if he see you, <laughs> old, old Jamaican proverb says, a drowning man will reach for anything. So, so say, see, they ain't gonna worry about El Thrift saving them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a stick. Hey, I'm gonna do the quick saying thing. I'll make sure if you're gonna drown anything, you're gonna drown that stick. <laughs> Look here, I, I had my fair share of trying to save people who do not want to be saved. Man, you ever took a big gulp of water? <laughs> you you'll kick backwards after that. <laughs> Oh, don't want to be saved, man. They just want what you got for the moment. Want to sympathize with you and get into your heart. But God said, though these three men were in it, they could only, they, they said, won't even be able to deliver your son and daughter because children won't even follow now. Children's heart has got, that's what touched, my, touched, touched me Sunday. And, and, and then to hear a mother's testimony after that, she, she said, she talked to me. She said, Mama, I don't want to go to hell. Back there talking, she said, that's what she said to her mother. She said, Mama, I don't want to go to hell. So she came on out and came on up. You know, and I tell people this, I don't care how old they are. When, when they, and, and then here, this little young man over here, he couldn't have been no more than seven or eight years old. You know what he asked me? Can you give me more information about baptism? Y'all think these folks, all these folks, just, you know, y'all niggas got them crazy and stuff. The, the, the little man, very intelligent. Can you give me, that's why I told him, give me, get, get, get the CD back there and give it to him. He put it in his pocket. Huh? I said, children. Got more sense. Can you give me more information about baptism? What kid? What child? What grown up? I wonder why I can't, I can't, I got to preach. They listening. <laughs> why y'all mind somewhere else trying to get up out of here and go, go get a piece of chicken or two. They listening. Now, now, now we got to understand here. God says that he is going to make the land desolate. What caused that other thrill? Again, the false prophets and the people following them. Say, it's a danger to follow something that ain't right. Most of these folks going to church, they know it ain't right. I've seen, I, I know a lot of folk go to these different charismatic churches. They be dating, they be sexing, they do a lot of things, man. And, but they still think they just as sane as anybody else. They do all the sins of the world, but yet they come to church, lift their hands up, and glory, hallelujah. And you know, some of them shout and speak in some. Some kind of tongue. But on their way to hell, faster than what they think. God said, I'm going to make the place desolate. And saints, I don't want to be the one taken in the desolation. Though these three men, he said, verse 17, or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. You understand, saints? I thought about this just, just then, how, I don't know, it was 90-something, 90 93, 94, but we had the Gulf crisis, the, the war, Persian Gulf crisis. Man, it was so many people came to our church temporarily. Thank, from Alabaster to our church, we baptized over 80-some 80, 80 people in two days. Brother, Brother Mike was in one of them. He was in that crusade there. But after the war was over, our church would fill up during that war. But when the war was over, yeah. Brother Mike was here today. That's, I remember when they were little. That's when, that's when they came in during that time. Because uh, they thought the world was finna blow up. 
They thought Jesus was on their way back. Man, folks sitting in the back of the church, man, all these visitors, they cry, I want to be baptized. Man, we, that's so many people in them streets that have been baptized in Jesus' name. Y'all may think they don't, they don't know who God is. We, 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 baptized, we baptized a bunch of people. And I think they did about a, close to 80-some people in two days. It's one of the greatest outpouring that we've had around this area, man. But after about a, two or three months, man, they, they, they went on dissipated. A few hung around, you know. Some of them backslid because some of them went to college. And how you do in school? School going to test you. School, school going to test you. And I thank God for them that, that, that we had in our church. That, uh, that they, got in, they said they had prayer circles. Them young people, man, in high school, when in the morning they got together and they prayed. I was so proud of our young people. They prayed because back then, that's when the, the, these people were coming in with this Satanism. There was a few kids in the school, too. They were throwing circles, praying, praying to the devil back then. But our little saints, they said we did the same thing. Uh, all the saints found each other and they prayed before they went to class. Man, if we could have a touch of that among our grown people, Amen. not 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 our not just our young folk, but the grown, we ain't, we, we get what we want. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. I preach it down in Mississippi, boy, areas like that, man. I, here I am, uh, uh, still in the bed. They don't went to a uh, 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 four o'clock prayer. Come back home, get ready for work. All the churches. Four o'clock prayer. They at the church at four o'clock in the morning. Come back home, put the work clothes on, and go to work. Man, we're so like I said, I, I saw revival down there when I'm talking about making altar call. When you see people get up and it's just all across the place that they, they huh from here to, 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 to Twice or three times longer this bill, number of people want to be saved. And they just back there will line up folk baptized. All the rooms full of folk they turn with. I was used to that. But man, folk hard. Done got so hard now. Like I say, God, God is He He tightened the spigot up now. We might get a drop every now and then, but it ain't no out, it ain't close to no, it ain't no close to no pour now. Because the heart of the people is not, not conditioned. Man, folk mind everywhere. Look here. Folk mind today is everywhere else but on God. Y'all ain't, y'all. I ain't even looking for no revival. If it came, they wouldn't even know what a revival was. God trying to revive you. you know, what's going on? You know? And she just shout, look at him. Look at him. You, just you look at that them. God said, aren't you a part of the body? You need to be revived. When the last time you shouted? When the last time I, you heard yourself? That's God Almighty. Amen. God said amen. When the truth don't change, you know that, 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 that uh, God said oh, the wild beast ain't going to change and neither the sword. <laughs> I thank God say, when I read this word, I can see me. He says here, Though these three men were in it, as I live, said the Lord, verse 18, they shall deliver neither the sons nor they said this twice, right? But they only shall be delivered. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and, and beast, though Noah, Daniel, look how he's, see, when God began to reiterate this, it's, it's final. It, it, it's, he, he's just full you know what I'm saying? You, you're just talking about it like I talk about it so much. It, 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 it's a sign of being full of something. You're just tired. He's tired of these folks. So Noah, Daniel, Job were in it as I live, said the Lord God. They shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, how much more when I send my four sword judgments? Upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, and the north and pestilence, amen, and the beast to cut off from it man and beast. God said, Now, you think they won't they won't repent from the word 
How much more when they're running from their life? Got to understand, saying this is like the same thing. The tribulation gonna happen. A lot of folk that know the truth got baptized and just really didn't do what they need to do, be left here. They're gonna be running for their lives. Gonna be a lawless society. Look here, ain't gonna be electricity like this going. Look here, one eighth of the world food supply gonna be left. Like I said, back in the days of Jeremiah, women ate their own children. It's gonna get worse than that. Who gonna be sitting around catering to you? Ain't nobody gonna be caring about. They're gonna be running for their lives. Amen. For three and a half years, you can't keep up. Huh? I, I, I watched the beginning of the war in Ukraine. You know who suffered the most? The older people. They couldn't get out in time. They showed some of the folks trying to, they can only tow them so far. Huh? And then some of them got there, they got dogs and uh, they ain't helping nobody. They just got their dogs and their fur coats and all that kind of stuff. Then the rich folks, that's see. They need none of that stuff. Should have been helping some elderly person. But man, when, when, when atrocities like that happen, folks all about self. That'd have been me. I'd have ran by the store and had a, 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 a thing, two, two suitcases full of, full of beanie weenies or whatever. <laughs> See, some of them, believe me, during the tribulation, people are going to do that. Going to rob these grocery stores. They are trying to survive. It ain't gonna be all nice and you know. Well, can I I, I? I say something for you? No, no, no. That's why the Bible said, "Blessed is the man who makes it in the first resurrection. In the second resurrection, there ain't no power. You have to suffer, man." That's why I tell people the day you hear this voice, not just look here. Don't do it because they're all thrift. You better do it because you want to make it. <laughs> Man, I'm just telling you, I tell you so much because, see, I don't want to come up, you know, well, uh, 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 God bring me in and say, uh, there, there's somebody who has an accusation against you. Okay, what's the accusation? Well, they say, they say you didn't you didn't preach it. R roll, roll. I, I'll, be, I'll be bold. Say, roll, roll, roll this. Roll, it. roll my life now. And, and by the time you hear it, you'll hear it a hundred times. Say, do you need to hear it again? He said, he said it a thousand times. You need to hear it again. That, your blood ain't going to be on my hand. See, see, what people want you to do is leave certain things alone. Look at him. I'm not doing this to lash out at you. God is giving mercy. Because he's, look how, he's, how many times he said this. He's giving them mercy. Saints, that's all that God owe us. And he don't owe us that. Huh? God said, I'm going to say, look what it says, verse 22. Yet, behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be confronted concerning the evil that have been brought in Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. Now, what's going to happen is, after all this go down in Jerusalem, uh, 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 what God going to do, he's going to save a remnant, and, and they're going to go to Babylon still, though. But what they're going to do in Babylon, they're going to testify to all that the prophet said was true. They're going to testify and say, well, Jeremiah preached, we just experienced it. What Ezekiel said to y'all down here, we just went through it. The reason being is sometimes people just do not believe the preacher. He preaching truth. You know he's coming out the Bible, but he just summoned us. And all we need is one person to tell us, that's just El know. You know how hard he, he just, he, he preaching. But the guy said something the other day. I, he said I was preaching something. He said, man, let's shut up. This man telling the truth. They try to put words, you know, like it's, 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 it's some other than the truth. It's some other than the truth. Man, you, you got to understand we're living in a weak world with weak-minded people. Self will make you weak when it comes down to sin. When it comes down to doing what you want to do, self going to choose self. <laughs> self don't never choose the word of God. <laughs> self going to do what self want to do. And guess what? When God can't talk to self, can't nobody talk to self. 
Yeah, hey, man, I'm the only one hollering and screaming. <laughs> you don't hear God doing that. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Yeah, we. If I wasn't hollering and screaming, I'd say, what's wrong with the other fellow? Something wrong with him? He... <laughs> now, ain't nothing wrong with him. He just tired of hollering and screaming. Because <laughs> cause if you don't change after that, all I can do is save myself. I have the right to do that, too. Verse 23 says, and they shall comfort you when you see their ways and their doings, and you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. Now, I made reference to this amen, in Nehemiah. You can get it and read it, chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. Remember how Nehemiah was in the court, and he was serving the king, and then one of his brethren came. What did he do? He told him what was going on. Nehemiah didn't know what was going on in Jerusalem or Judah, but but the servant came and told him how the wall was torn down. That, you read the story now. He told him that's how that's how he fell on his face. That shows how how far we are from reality sometimes. Until somebody come and confess. That's why I love when people come from my past to this church. They start confirming. See, sometimes y'all look at me. Wow, nah, that ain't love. They, they start talking. I ain't got no reason to be lying. But sometimes some people just need to man, man, he will, you know. But but if if you don't believe God, what's gonna convince you? But when Nehemiah heard that, he went into action. One of the first things Nehemiah did was Nehemiah saw it. The man came, he saw, it. then he heard it. Then he confessed it before the king. And what did he do last? He went to God. He said, God, you confirming your word. My question is to you today, how do you know the word is conformed? I mean, how do you know God confirming the word if you don't know the word? You don't know if God's word being confirmed if you don't know the word. Think about all these years. How God been confirming his word right in your life and you didn't have a clue because you didn't know the word of God. Right up to the 14th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's 